Hi everyone, my name is Kathy. I am the Digital Humanities Assistant at San Diego State University. Welcome to another Twine tutorial. In this video, we'll be talking about conditional statements. So what are conditional statements? Conditional statements are a way for us to tell computers how to make decisions. We'll have to come up with some scenarios that a computer will come across and how it should react if some condition is met versus if another condition is met. You can think of it like a decision tree with one decision leading to one result and another leading to another result. They're fairly universal across most coding languages and most languages will have some form of an if-else statement. So why would we want to use if, else, and twine? In my original video where I had rewritten Romeo and Juliet for twine, I wanted a certain decision in the beginning of my project to affect the story way down the line. So in the beginning of Romeo and Juliet, Prince Aeschylus' decree of whether or not the next person to incite violence between the two families would be punished with death would come into play when Romeo kills Tybalt way down here. Dead Tybalt. With the if else statement, the choice the reader makes would display alternate text during the Romeo kills Tybalt passage. You can see my if else statement here. Without the if else statement, you would have to create a whole alternate decision tree to create the same effect. You can see on the right side that you can make the decision at the same passage. So here in the street fight, you can choose any of these passages to go down, but you would then have to copy and paste all of these passages in the middle between the different decisions in order for it to end up here in the same dead Tybalt passage and then for it to lead to different endings. Whereas on the left side you can see that with my if else statement things are a little bit more concise. You can make the decision and then it'll lead to all these middle passages. And then finally, it will lead to one dead table passage with three different endings coming off of it. So the basic structure of a conditional statement is if this condition is met, then that happens. Else, if another condition is met, then another thing happens. Else, if neither of those conditions are met, then yet another thing happens. So let's focus on the example on the left side here. In my example for today, I want to make a different outcome from different decrees the user can choose for Prince Aeschylus to make. The first decree is that the user can choose for Prince Aeschylus just to let everyone off with a warning and doesn't decree that violence is punishable by death. So you can see here that this decision leads to the warning passage. And then the second decree is that the next person to incite violence will pay a hefty fine, which leads to the fine passage. And then your lives shall pay the forfeit of the peace, which is the original text in Shakespeare, will lead to the meanwhile passage. So if the first decree is said, then I want it to lead to my happy couple ending, where the two can stay together in Verona. Else if the second decree is said, which is the fine, then it will lead to the broke couple ending. Else if the reader chooses new either of those decrees, then the normal ending will play out. So how would we know which choice the reader made? We'll have to store that information in a variable. A variable is just a symbol that stores information. To make a variable, you have to use the set macro. So a macro is indicated by these parentheses here. So you can do set colon and then my variable is indicated by this dollar sign in the beginning so anything following a dollar sign will be a variable i have to set this variable to a value and you can set your variables to be either a string which is just a collection of characters or a number or a boolean which means true or false in my case, I'll just assign the decrees to a number. My original ending decree will just be set to zero. My warning decree will be set to one and my find decree will be set to two. Uh, you can see that I'm setting the variable in different passages so that as the reader chooses the different passages, the variable will be set to different values. Also notice my placement of the set macros. Because my passages will converge on the meanwhile passage, 
I don't want to place my set decree to zero there because it will override the other two variables set. You can play the passages to test that out. So if you hover over a passage and click play, it'll open it up in a browser for you. And then you can say, take this as a warning. You can see on the bottom right hand of the screen that it will set my decree variable to the number one. First, let me take the set variable decree to zero macro and put it into my Mima passage. Then I'll play it. So here you can see that none of my variables are being set and my story begins with a street by passage. I'm going to first go to the Your Lives Shall Pay the Fourth as a Peace passage, and you can see that my decree variable is set to zero. And then if I go all the way down, it will lead me to my normal ending. But if I go back to this passage and then I choose the Find passage, you can see that my decree is set to the number two. But then, now that I'm back in the meanwhile passage, it went from this passage to this passage. The decree set to zero is in this passage, so it got overridden, and I'll only be able to access the normal ending once again. And the same goes for the warning passage. So now, if I put my set decree to zero back into the story begins passage, I'll play that. I can now choose any of the passages without them overriding each other. So my life will pay the forfeit of the piece. This is still zero and it doesn't get overwritten. If I go back to the find passage, you'll see that it's set to the number two and this doesn't get overwritten either. And now I can access the broke couple ending. After you have a condition, you'll need to check if it's met further down the line. So the decree will come into play after Tybalt dies, so I will put my if else statement in my dead Tybalt passage. To check your variable's condition, we'll use the if else macros, and that's what that looks like here. So the basic structure is my parentheses if colon then my variable, and then a checker. So um, you can use is to mean equals, you can use a greater or equal sign, you can use a less than or equal sign, greater, less than, to check the value of the variable here. So I'm checking first if my decree variable is one, if that is true, then everything in the brackets after that will show. If that is not true, then I'll check the else if macro. So then I can use parentheses, else if colon, my variable, my checker, and then a value that I want to check. So else if my decree is greater than or equal to two, then everything in these brackets following that macro will show. Else is a catch-all for if these first two statements are not true. So if my decree is not one, if my decree is not greater than or equal to two, then everything in these brackets will show. You could also use else if decree equals zero here to achieve the same effect, but if you have many other values for your variable, it's easier just to use else as a catch-all. So here we can see that in action using the play button. So if I hit play, so here I can, let's do take this as a warning. It will set to the number one. I'll go down my passages and see in the dead Tibble passage, the number is one. So if decree is one, Prince Aeschylus grieves over his kinsman, but agrees that Romeo had the right to kill Tybalt, and Romeo can stay in the city with Juliet. And then if I click with Juliet, you'll see that um, it is on the happy couple passage. So if I go all the way back, I can say the next person to incite violence will pay a hefty fine. Then go all the way to my dead Tybalt passage. You can see my dead table passage here. My decree is set to the number two. And then you can see that this text 
is the same as my else if statement. Prince Aeschylus orders Romeo to pay a hefty fine, but can stay in the city with Juliet. And you can see that it goes to my broke couple passage here. Then I can go all the way back and test that my set decree to zero stays that way. So your lives shall pay the forfeit of the peace. So because zero is neither one nor greater than or equal to zero, then my else passage shows. And then you can see that it has the normal ending that Shakespeare wrote originally. And there you have it. You can now use the if else statement in your own twine stories to even have more complex decision making in your nonlinear stories. Thank you for watching.